Right, Amstrad fans, we're now looking at the next game in the series, License to Kill. A film notorious for being a bit of a box office bomb in America, and also for its violent content. But also being one of the first bombs to really break the mould, as it's uh, a revenge story, long before Daniel Craig in Casino Royale. But Alex Leiter there, who's wife on his wedding night is raped and killed and he gets half eaten by sharks so Bond sets out on a revenge mission against Robert Davi there the excellent bad guy and his henchman Benicio del Toro in an early role anyway the Bond girls are okay this time round Carrie Lowell is uh, more than a match for Bond so not particularly appealing to me but to Lisa Soto for it's also notable for uh, Q making more of an uh, appearance in, in the films, who uh, comes out in the field for the first time and uh, really shows uh, the friendship between him and Bond does really exist, aside from all their bickering. But anyway, on to the game. License to Kill, another Domark license, and uh, it's not bad actually at all. He doesn't suffer from the broken gameplay of uh, the Living Daylights. Uh, but unfortunately it's far too easy. But you'll see me uh, play through to the end. Nice uh, Bond theme there on the uh, title screen from the excellent David Whittaker. Some really nice music sound effects um, in the game. Along with some lovely colourful graphics and some uh, varied gameplay, but unfortunately each of the levels are far too short and far too easy. In fact, the first level, which you'll see short, is probably the hardest, but once you sort of master um, the height of the helicopter, you'll see you progress, and uh, you can finish the levels really quickly and really easily. It's a bit of a shame, because this was I think this was the last Bond game, or did the spy love me come after this? I can't remember. That's crap anyway, I'll probably look at that next and I've got these to the kill to do as well. But um, from a company like Domark, who produced no end of shit, um, this, is, this is not bad at all. Let's start the game. This is the first level. That's Sanchez, the, the main bad guy in the jeep there, and you're supposed to be chasing him. It's not clear in the instructions whether you're actually supposed to uh, blow up the jeep or not. Uh, I do anyway. Doesn't affect the game. In other versions I've seen the jeep uh, appear, if you, don't, if you leave the jeep it gets to the end of the level. He just appears at the start of the second level and starts firing wildly at you. But in the Amstrad version that doesn't happen anyway. So you might as well just blow him up and just get to the end of the level as quickly as possible. As you can see, some like lovely, nice, colourful graphics, quite well defined. Although the bullets are really hard to see in the background, but really, it's not really presenting much of a challenge anyway. I think this is the end of the first level already, anyway. This one's probably my favourite level of the game. Sort of a novel take on the the old classic Commando. But I really like how the uh, target targeting system works. I mean, there's a bit more thought to this then. And this is actually, you know, this is actually fairly fun for a blast. In fact, I half wish um, that I either made this level longer or uh, had more levels like this. Just to pad the game out a bit more and give a bit more of a challenge. Those uh, white barrels, uh, if you shoot them four times, they explode. Like that, and take out any bad guys in the vicinity. Now, compared to the other 8 bit versions, uh, it's very similar to the Spectrum version, but obviously, sort of wins out for having better uh, graphics and sound effects, I think, are much better on this version. Although, I have to say, the Commodore 64 version wins a prize this time round. Um, it's a lot more intense the action and actually for once has better graphics 
Oh, well, on this, uh, for once in the Amstrad though, um, everything, everything sort of scrolls and moves rather nicely and smoothly. Although the pace is rather laid back on this level. Probably could have made this a little bit more challenging by having some more, more bad guys to deal with. Or less hits to kill Bond or something. No in game music on this though. Um, although one of the levels, which you'll see shortly, does feature in game music. Um, there's another sc scrolling section, so um, I'm sure there was enough memory to uh, shove in a tune. Even so, it's all very nicely presented. Although well, the AI of the bad guys is not particularly brilliant. Can I just like stand there and wait for t wait to be shot? Be nice if they moved around and took cover and uh, took pot shots at Bond and stuff. Well, I've taken a fair amount of damage so far. Probably the uh, so this is probably the longest level of the game. But looking at the uh, timeline of my video, I'm already halfway through. Take him out of a barrel explosion. I suppose License to Kill is still one of my favourite Bond movies. Um, Timothy Dalton is excellent as ever. Although the film in places just begins to sort of lag a bit. And it's pretty unusual having a Bond revenge story. At the start of the movie, he gets his uh, license revoked and resigns. Um, and the original title of the movie was actually "License Revoked," but they thought the Americans wouldn't understand what it meant, so the, li uh, the title was changed. <laughs> to be honest, "License to Kill" is a better title anyway. I think it is loosely based on a Bond book. I think the I think the last one to be uh, based on an Ian Fleming story, even if very loosely. But yeah, the game, uh, sorry, the movie was, you know, did well all around the world, including the UK, but didn't in America due to, um, like, ballsing at the marketing. And also, there were some really big movies that year, like um, Batman the Movie. Well, the first Batman with um, Jack Nicholson as the Joker and stuff. And I think The Untouchables came out as well, so it was some tough competition, but it pretty much killed Bond's uh, movie career for a while. Alright, third level, all you got to do is position Bond over the plane, you see a little, uh, <laughs> very quickly finish that, you see a little uh, target appear and just press the fine button at the right time. There's absolutely no real challenge on this level. I suppose they could have made it more challenging by if you press the fine button it drops Bond and then he's dead, if you like mistime it. Anyway, f level four, what you got to do here is uh, shoot a harpoon onto the... Um, side of the plane there and the bond will start skiing behind it so you get a harpoon by uh, killing one of the uh, uh, guys swimming after you and really it's just a, a case of like avoiding the obstacles and waiting for the plane to come back and hit the side there the side jet and all you need to do avoid the rocks and get up to the plane as quickly as possible Just press it up Oh, bit of a bug there. I should I should actually been killed there, and I've already reached the plane rather quickly. And guess what, guys? This is the final level. What you need to do is get some speed up, get your tanker to the bottom of the screen, and then overtake and just bash them with the lower half of your truck and knock them off the road. If you attack them from the front uh, front half of the truck, uh, you'll start taking damage really, really quickly. But again, this is so easy to do. Again, just stick at the back. 
I'm waiting for them to move down the screen and then shoot past them and bang them off the road. As easy as that. I think there's five trucks, so we've only got three to go and we've completed the game. Be it. There's no sort of final com um, confrontation and showdown with uh, the bad guy Sanchez, unfortunately. So the, the game ends on a real damp squib and a real shame. This is actually quite well programmed for what it is. All I needed to do was, you know, I don't know, increase the length of levels or less hits to kill Bond or something. I don't know. It's probably about a 6 out of 10 overall I'd mark it. Is this the final truck? Or the one after, I can't remember. So maybe the final one. All well, the trucks are the same as each other, so. That's it. A bit of a bug there, the uh, <laughs> music cuts off rather quickly. So let's just kill myself and enjoy the final theme music, which is pretty good. Like David Whitaker's version of uh, You Only Live Twice. So I'll let you listen to this and leave you here. Hope you enjoyed, and see you on the next Bond game. Cheers. <laughs>